Welcome to lesson three of the Blender Jewelry Design course. Again, we're working with Blender 4.2 long-term service or LTS version. And today I'm going to cover and lesson three is learning how to work in three dimensions. And I have to admit, this is going to be one of the most difficult things for you to understand. Some of you are going to get it right away. Some of you are going to take a much more longer time to getting used to working in three dimensions. If you're not used to working in CAD and working in a three-dimensional environment, you may have a very difficult time understanding um, when you move objects from one location to another where they end up in the 3D space or the 3D world. So I'm going to get you started here, and then I want you to go play as much as you can. It took me um, probably about an hour to get used to working in three dimensions. So I don't expect the fact that, you know, everybody's different. Everybody learns differently. So, you know, there's 8 billion people in this world. And there's probably 4 billion ways to teach somebody something. Go ahead, get started, follow along, and then go play like, I taught, like I'm going to teach you in this lesson to add some objects and move them around, get used to where they go and how they kind of fit into the 3D viewport. Let's get started. Okay, so one of the hardest things to learn when you're starting to use Blender is learning how to work in three dimensions. Three dimensions can be quite confusing to people. Now, if you remember correctly, uh, in lesson one, I talked about this small little red and white circle in, it's in the middle of the screen, and that is directly in, I'm gonna hide the uh, cube here, and you can see that's directly in the intersections of the X and Y axes denoted by the green and red line. So no matter how I move here, you can see that little center is in the center of the intersections of the X and Y axis, and that is the center of your view space. Let's get that cube back. Okay, so now with that selected, you have to understand about origins. Now, if I take this cube and we look at this cube and I rotate around, if you remember correctly, I told you in lesson one, using the middle mouse button, we can rotate around a selected object. If you look very closely in the center of this object, you'll see a yellow dot. That yellow dot represents the origin or center point of this cube. That dot right now is on the origin of our 3D view space, which is denoted by the red and white line or red and white circle. If I move this over with the arrow key here and if you remember we activated that by going to the gizmos tab and activating the move function putting a check mark there we can now move our object left and right forward and back or up and down okay and if you ever want to put that back hit shift s and then we can go shift s and select selection to cursor and that'll bring it back to the middle what I'm trying to get to is that working in three dimensions is kind of tricky in Blender because we can use the arrow keys to move them along the axes. And if we want to go back and say Control Z or Command Z, depending on your keyboard, and it'll undo that previous move. Or you can press the G key to move things around. Now, let's take a look at what I meant. If I, I'm going to duplicate this object by pressing Shift D and pressing Enter, and now I have two cubes. So here's our first cube, here's our second cube. Now they're over each other, so really, you really can't tell which one I have selected. I'll come to my outliner here and I'll select cube 001, which is the cube I just duplicated. And I'm gonna move that over with the yellow arrow. So I'm basically moving it along the Y axis all the way over or behind this particular cube in a straight line. And by doing that, I've basically kept its origin along the plane this grid is our plane and I, I've just moved it over and it's still lined up in jewelry design we have to keep things lined up you can take a cube now let's just put this one back you can take a cube and let's say I'm looking at it from this perspective and if I hit G and I move it if I just move it over here you can see now that it's not it's not in line with the original cube. This is this being the original cube, this being the duplicate. It's off the plane, it's raised up because I moved it just freely. And using the G key, you can freely move an object anywhere you want, but it pulls it out of alignment. So just keep that in mind. 
you might run into situations where you grab an object using the G key to move it and move it somewhere and now it's way off to the side and you can't figure out how to put it back. Well, don't fret because we can always put it back to the center and get things reoriented. When working in CAD in general, you're always going to be working with perspective views. We're going to look from uh, on the keypad, we'll be pressing the one button. Okay, and if I put my mouse here and press one on the keypad, this is the front view. The seven view is a top down view, and three is the side view. Now, that may seem kind of funky to you right now, but don't worry, don't fret too much. For instance, I can press negative Y, and it's the front view of my scene, just like pressing one on the keypad. If I want to look at this from the opposite side, I can press the 9 and that'll flip me 180 degrees along that view. If I don't make sense, really what I want you to do is go ahead and play so you can see what happens when you do certain things. If I look at this from the side with the 3 key on my keypad, now I'm looking at it from, let's say, a negative, or an X position or a negative X position and I can flip it with these buttons here if I don't have a keypad or I can press 3 on my keypad to get the side view and then the opposite side would be pressing 9. It basically just rotates it along that same axis 180 degrees. Again with the top if I look top down so I'm looking at this from the positive Z looking down at something I can press 9 now and look at it from the bottom. Eventually that will make sense to you but it's it's going to take a little time. When modeling in CAD you don't ever want to freeform move your object because freely moving an object puts it in a weird spot. And what happens if you move it someplace and now you don't know how to get it back? There's a panic and now I've got this thing that I can't align right with, with what I'm doing. And you'll notice this as you go further playing that uh, you can get things out of whack. So for instance, if I look at this now, you can see this cube, even though it looks very similar along the, uh, the red mark or the X axis, it's below that, it's center point now is below that, that line, that red line. So we can manually move it up and do it that way and try to get it lined up. And sometimes that works. And if I go to three and then nine, you can see we're not lined up with the Z axis. So I can take the Y arrow and I can move it over just like so. And then go back to one and I have to move it over to the center. So that's the hard way of doing it. And that makes life really complicated. You're going to get frustrated, so try not to do that. But if you do that, if you grab it with G and you just freely move it, now it's way off in the middle of nowhere and it's not organized in the way you think you want it to be, select that object and press Shift S and then the top selection, which is Selection to Cursor. Selection to Cursor means whatever object you have, its origin point will be moved from here to that red and white line or that red and white circle. So click that and boom, it puts it right back. And now you can go back and move it along any one of these axes and try to keep it lined up wherever you want it. There are times where you'll work with free form or free moving, but for the most part, I don't. And, and there's a reason because most CAD programs, um, you're either working with symmetrics or you, you need to have something that's going to be moved right next to another object. So just get used to using these red arrows to move things, the green arrow to move it along the Y, and the blue to move it along the Z axis. Just keep that in mind. I'm just going to put that back for now, put it back in the center. Now we can change the origin of an object. For instance, let's get rid of this object here. So now we're back to our cube, and it's the duplicate cube, but it doesn't really matter. And if I look at this from the front view by pressing one on my keypad, now I'm looking at this also here, negative Y, so just keep that, or positive Y, so just keep that in mind. If I want to look at it from the opposite view, I can just click that and flip back and forth between views. But I'm looking at this from front view, which is one on the keypad, and if I repeat myself, I'm just going to beat it into you. With that done, I can move my object up just like so. And I can say, I want to change the origin point of this object, and I want to put it at the 3D cursor. And that's kind of what you'll be doing most in this jury class. Well, not mostly, but if we change the origin points, that's kind of what we do a lot. And you'll catch on as we move forward. But I can right-click here, come down to Set Origin, 
and 3D cursor. Now you see that little green dot is right in the middle bottom of our cube at the 3D cursor, which is that little red and white circle. For instance, now if I come over here and I just freely move this thing and just put it way off into space where I don't want it, if I press Shift S and I move the selection back to the cursor, we'll look at this from the front view again. Now you see, because we changed the origin point of our cube, it puts that object at its origin point in the center position of the 3D viewport. I hope that makes sense to you. Working in three dimensions can awfully be, can be very difficult. And for instance, I'm just going to give you a real quick scenario of why I tend not to do that. Let's say that I'm making um, a nameplate, and that nameplate's going to have diamonds on it. I'm going to take this cube, and I'm going to, I'm going to shrink it down on the z-axis, and I'm going to expand it on the z, or the x-axis, so sx, and I'm going to expand it. And now I've got this plate here. Now I want to add diamonds to this plate and to do that if we do it freeform I can come to Jewelcraft and I'm going to go into Jewelcraft a lot more extensively um, in, in one of the upcoming lessons. I believe it's going to be lesson six or five. But uh, for now let's just go ahead and add in a one millimeter diamond. And you can see that diamond gets added. It always gets added into the center point of our 3D viewport. Now I could take it by the blue arrow and just kind of move it up and put it right there and that's on, let's say this is our nameplate, it's right on top of the nameplate where a diamond should sit. Well let's say I want to move a diamond or I want to copy this diamond and move it along that X line, right? So if, and this is why it's important to use the arrows for X, Y, and Z. I'm going to take this, I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it, press Enter, and now I can just hit G to move it and now I'm going to move it over here and you can see what happens because I'm, I'm looking at this from a weird angle it's putting my my model in a weird position because I may be moving this left and right but left and right in the 3D world is different when you're working in a non-orthographic view so let's get rid of this diamond because we don't want it so what I typically do is I'll hit 7 to look at it from the top, and here's my diamond. And I can hit Shift, Duplicate, and then move it along the x-axis. So I'm going to move it over here. Now we can't see it, unfortunately, because it's buried. But if I use the arrow key, you can see I'm moving it along x. And that's kind of what I want you to get used to. We're going to duplicate that again, and then click, and then I'm going to move it over our new one just like so because if I try to move it this way I don't know where it's going to end up it could end up anywhere like over here and now we look at this from the front view you can see the diamonds too high and we don't want to waste time trying to get it all oriented in a, in a position that we waste time on so just get familiar with that because it's important to learn three dimensions and what I suggest is go ahead and play and I'm going to give you a little lesson that I want you to play with. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Um, I use the X key to delete. You can also hit, uh, to add in a model, we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to come over to Mesh. And I'm going to cover this in a little more detail in the, one of the upcoming lessons. But we're going to go ahead and add in a cube. And there you can see, we'll go back to our Items tab. We have another 2 millimeter dimensionally correct cube. And then I want you to add in another object, Shift A, we'll add in a, oh, let's see, how about a UV sphere. And then what I want you to do is play with these two, just keeping them lined up in a, in a straight line. Like I, get, like I said, if we select the UV sphere right here, and I press G, I'm moving it all over the place right now, and it's freely moving in a free location, and it's not aligned in any particular way of getting it organized. So I'm going to press Control Z and put that back. And now let's take a look. If we move it from the front and I hit G, I'm only moving it along the Z and the X axis. So it's still flat on our, on our plane. If we look at it from, I think it's three, 
you can see from the side view I haven't moved off the blue line so whatever you're working on when you're working in an orthographic mode you're, you're gonna see you have more control over where it goes consider like when if any of you ever took a drafting class in school I know when I was in high school we had drafting classes you always work with like a top view a side view and a front view and you you always made your objects conform to those three views which is why it's important to use a keypad with your computer when using blender because I can go front side and top and I can make sure that I always orient my objects in the proper way and I'm just gonna put that back over here and I'm doing this freely but I'm, I'm only working in two dimensions okay so now you see how that works again go play because it's going to be very important as we move through and you're going to find that when I'm teaching you how to make jewelry I'll be showing you how to use the arrows because it's going to be your lifeline to coordinating things in three dimensions there's no real way to teach you that other than to tell you to go and play with this so be my guest after you finish this lesson go ahead and start playing with three dimensions now if you want to add more objects to your screen remember shift a you hold shift down and press the a key brings up the add menu and if you don't want to do that you can come over to the add menu that's right here which is the sub menu in our 3d viewport I can come down and I could add a mesh any one of these things and I'll just go and add in a cylinder and now if you see I'll just move that over here and now you can see we've got a cylinder we've got a, a sphere and a cube and just play with those get the feel for how to use the arrows when you're selecting an object for instance if I select the cylinder now the cylinder has objects and I can move it along Y I can move it along Z and if I rotate my screen a little bit I can move it along X you can do that with every single object within your 3d viewport so that's it for lesson three again go get used to it spend about a half an hour moving things around seeing how they get messed up try using the arrows to keep them located in the in a much more organized and correct position and then we're going to come back and lesson in one of the lessons we start making some jewelry designs with and we're going to work more closely with this that's it for lesson three i hope you like this guys if you did please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions please put them in the comments section below i'm going to try to do a q and a session so every time i get a question in the comments i'm going to make a small video to go through that and cover the things within that lesson itself thanks for watching have a great day